Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today and the show's first ever book club. Now I'm just kidding, only kind of. It'll make sense in a minute. Today we're talking about the best way to redeem the Amex Platinum $240 a year digital entertainment credit. And we're going to do this by taking a look at the books that I've read on Audible. Now before you click away, stick with me here because I think this is a little bit different of a show, but I think you're going to like some of the titles that I've actually gone through and found. So we'll take a look at 12 different options you can use so it'll get you through the entire year. I'll talk you about a little bit of synopsis about the book with no real spoilers, but why I liked it, why I think you guys as a financially inclined and interested audience will like it too. And of course, at the end, I'll ask you for some recommendations so we can have a mini book club going in the comment section below. So if that sounds interesting to you, you want to get your inner nerd on, then go ahead, press the subscribe button. Let's get to work. So first of all, let's start by talking about that digital entertainment credit. This is a new credit to the Amex Platinum card, and you do have to enroll in it. You do this by going into your Amex Platinum account going to the benefits in the enrollment section and then actually activating it. Now the credit itself is $240 a year. In typical Amex fashion, it is paid out in $20 installments per month, and these do not roll over. Now I'm going to be focusing on Audible here, and I will say this is not one of those sponsored Audible videos that you see, although Audible should definitely give me a call after this one. Situation here, I'm going to put up a slide for each book. We're going to go through 12 of them really quickly, and I'll just give you a quick synopsis why I found it interesting, why I think you'll like it too. So go ahead, stick around for a while, so let me know if you like this new format as we go, but let's kick it off with the first title. So the first title we have is Super Pumped, The Battle for Uber. So on the screen, you'll have the author, the price, and then the writing that users have give this on Audible. So publisher summary here. In June of 2017, Travis Kalanick, the hard-charging CEO of Uber, was ousted in a boardroom coup that capped a brutal year of, for the transportation giant. Uber had catapulted to the top of the tech world, yet for many came to symbolize everything wrong with Silicon Valley. So to me, this was a very interesting book because it tells you the story from the genesis of Uber back when it was just an idea on paper all the way through how the team created it, all the issues and challenges they had to go through with local transit authorities, how they kind of did this guerrilla warfare tactic to just get up and running, and how some of it didn't work, how, you know, some of this stuff, again, you've heard about, so I don't think this is really spoilers here, but how some of the drivers would sign up just to, you know, get the free phones and then leave. Again, this was all been reported on, but these are the behind the scene details. So I thought this was a very interesting read that I really did enjoy. Title number two we have is The Lost Bank, the story of Washington Mutual, the biggest bank failure in American history. During the most dizzying days of the financial crisis, Washington Mutual, a bank with hundreds of billions of dollars in its coffers, suffered a crippling bank run, the story of its final brutal collapse in the autumn of 2008 and its controversial sale to J.P. Morgan Chase. Is an astonishing account of how one bank lost itself to greed and mismanagement and how the entire financial industry, even the entire country, lost its way as well. A lot of us forget that Washington Mutual was basically like Wells Fargo. Not, not like corrupt Wells Fargo that gets in trouble, but Wells Fargo had a run where they were huge and they were everything. Well, that was Washington Mutual out on the West Coast. And then to see how it all happened, they go through on this huge spree of buying everyone where they are a juggernaut. And then eventually Chase comes in and that negotiation's fun. So this one, again, really great read. If you're a fan of Chase or Chase credit cards, definitely put it on your list. Next up, we have the Spider Network. Publisher summary in 2006, an oddball group of bankers, traders, and brokers from some of the world's largest financial institutions made a startling realization. LIBOR, the London Interbank Offered Rate, which determines the interest rates of trillions of loans, could be manipulated. This is one of those banks that's a real-life story, but I ended up learning a ton about LIBOR that I didn't know how interest rates were set. They do talk a lot about international banking. So if you're looking to learn something, but through a story format, but based, that it's actually a real story, I would definitely check this one out. This one will definitely hold your attention. Next one, taking a break from the banking world, we have Private Empire, Exxon Mobil. So Steve Cole, the author, investigates the largest and most powerful private corporation in the United States, revealing the true extent of its power. Exxon Mobil's annual revenues are larger than the economic activity in the great majority of countries. In many of the countries where it conducts business, Exxon Mobil's sway over politics and security is greater than that of the United States Embassy. So for me, this one ended up in my library just because I didn't know a ton about ExxonMobil, but I just knew they were this huge powerhouse company in their industry, and I wanted to learn more about them, and this definitely doesn't disappoint. 
Next one, American Icon. This is the story of Ford. So, so at the end of 2008, Ford Motor Company was just months away from running out of cash with the auto industry careening toward ruin. Congress offered all three Detroit automakers a bailout. So this is telling the story of how Ford ended up making a comeback from the brink of bankruptcy and going under. So obviously I work in the Motor City. I wanted to learn more about it, but this one is again another interesting title because it's told from real life account, but in story format. So it's easy to follow and you really get some behind the scenes details of everything that Ford had to go through and why they ended up making it. Next up we have Shoe Dog. So this is by Phil Knight, the man who founded Nike himself. So in this candid and riveting memoir for the first time ever, Nike founder and CEO Phil Knight shares the inside story of the company's early days as an intrepid startup and its evolution to one of the world's most iconic, game-changing, and profitable brands. Another book that does a great job of going behind the scenes from the very, very start to Nike, before Air Max, before Air Force Ones, before Air Jordan, all of that, everything, and how Phil Knight actually started it from his time being a runner at Oregon and you know coming up with the shoe concept, everything he had to do to figure this out and the competition he went through. Next up, we have Billion Dollar Whale. So in 2009, Shelby Mild Manor graduate of the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business named Joe Lowe set in motion of a fraud of unprecedented gall and magnitude, one that would come to symbolize the next generation of the threat of the financial global system. So again, this one, an actual true story, and funny enough, all I'll say with this one is... The fraud that this guy ended up doing actually helped fund everyone's favorite movie, Wolf of Wall Street. So definitely go check this one out, especially if you've seen Wolf of Wall Street. I think the tie-in will be very interesting. So next up, we have another break from the financial world, and that is American Kingpin. So in 2011, a 26-year-old libertarian programmer named Ross Ulbricht launched the ultimate free market, the Silk Road. A clandestine website hosted on the dark web where anyone could trade anything, drugs, hacking software, forged passports, counterfeit cash, poisons free of the government's watchful eye. Now this one, I just heard about the Silk Road, but I really didn't know that much about it, which is what everyone should say if they're talking about it on camera. But also another book that gives you a lot of backstory from, you know, the, the cops who actually went up and caught him, the planning and how he built the whole thing. So I keep saying they're all interesting, but of course I wouldn't put a boring title on the list. So another one I would definitely check out, especially if you want a break from the banking stuff we talked about earlier. So staying out of the banking lane again, we have Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. One of my favorite authors here. So in this stunning audible book, Malcolm Gladwell takes us on an intellectual journey through the world of outliers, the best and brightest, the most famous, and the most successful. He asks the question, what makes high achievers different? So this is very interesting because he goes through and takes a look at like Bill Gates, for example. And he says, is Bill Gates literally just smarter than everybody else? Or what played into Bill Gates' success? Obviously, the man is a genius, but there are other factors that we don't always think about. He has a few different examples of what sets these guys apart. So I learned a lot, and I really do like following Malcolm Gladwell's thought process and his research process as he goes about these books. Okay, so we've got three titles left, and this one is sticking with the departure from finance. We have Skunk Works. So this is a personal memoir of my years at Lockheed Martin. So from development of the U-2 to the stealth fighter, the never-before-told story behind America's high-stakes quest to dominate the skies, Skunk Works is the true story of America's most secret and successful aerospace operation. So it's told by the guy who actually worked on it and helped build the planes, the SR-71, the famous Blackbird. And funny enough, I actually sat across from a table a guy who worked on the planes at wedding about two or three years ago he had some fascinating stories so again this isn't banking related but i think everyone thinks the sr-71 is a cool plane okay so those 10 are all books from my library now we have two mentions that we're getting from friend of the channel john at bank account bonus central to give you some different options and some different perspective in case up through now you've actually hated every single option i've pitched you so let's take a look at what mr john has for his options now so rich's man in babylon the inspiring book began in 1926 as a series of informational pamphlets distributed by banks and insurance companies. By 1927, several of these pamphlets had been compiled into a book, and this collection has been in print ever since. And of course, the last option here is a classic Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So with an incredible number of five-star reviews, Rich Dad, Poor Dad has challenged and changed the way tens of millions of people around the world think about money with perspectives that often contradict controversial wisdom. Kiyosaki has earned a reputation for irreverence and courage. So there you go, guys. Those are a few titles that I've actually read over the years that I definitely think are worth it. And again, if Amex is going to be footing the bill or Audible is going to be footing the bill, this is one way that you can actually use the digital entertainment credit. So anyway, 
anyways, if you like this one, I know it's a little bit different. We didn't actually talk too much about a credit card, but if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, with that Sunday recap episode, there's all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. Let me know some of the titles you've been interested in down below so we can get some more options going for our viewers. And of course, Audible, definitely reach out. I feel like this one should have been a sponsored video for sure. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you.